This is KGW News at Noon. And what you're looking at on the left is a shot from our Sky 8, looking down on loggers, truckers, and farmers from across the state of Oregon. They gathered in Salem to make their voices heard about the controversial cap and trade bill. All right, thanks for joining us. It's noon. I'm Chris Willis. Democrats say that bill is dead, but Republicans are still missing from the Capitol for now the eighth day in a row. Let's get straight to the action today in Salem. Christine Pitawanich covering it all morning. Christine, what's going on now? Speakers here at the rally are done, but gosh, the action far from over. Take a look here at Northeast Court Street, right in front of the Capitol. Lots of people still here, and you can see and hear so many cars and trucks bumper to bumper. As far as we can see, it's been like this for a while now. The rally started around 9.15 this morning, but a lot of people were here early to make sure legislators saw and heard them. Truck after truck rolled right in front of the Capitol building in Salem. And right alongside them, these protesters, loggers, truckers, and farmers from all over Oregon and the region. The list goes on and on, but at the end of the day, we are all hardworking Oregonians. They say they're in Salem to make sure rural Oregon's collective voice is heard loud and clear. And I think it's pretty important for us to show up in numbers, and this is pretty awesome, this event right here. They're showing support for Republican senators who have been a no-show since last week. They walked out to avoid a vote on the controversial climate change bill, House Bill 2020, also known as cap and trade. They also want to make clear to the legislators who are at the Capitol that they oppose that bill. It's going to be a loss of jobs, families, communities. It's really going to affect not just us rural businesses, but even the consumers of these products that are freighted in. Earlier this week, Senate President Peter Courtney said the bill doesn't have enough votes to pass, but some are suspicious, worried Democrats could flip their vote if Republicans come back. Earlier this morning, we spoke with loggers about the issue as they headed to Salem. We don't believe it. We don't want the Republicans coming back. If this passes, rural Oregon is basically dead. We understand the climate change ordeal, but this is not the proper way to take care of it. Meantime, today in the Senate chamber, Republicans were nowhere to be found, leaving more than 100 bills up in the air. Yes, this is, it's a bummer situation. There's really no other way to put it. This isn't what we wanted to happen for sure. We just kind of feel backed against a wall. So that last woman you heard from considers herself an environmentalist. And in fact, a lot of the people here say they're all for a cleaner environment. They just don't think this bill, House Bill 2020, is the way to do it. Meantime, the Senate is in recess until 3 p.m. Hard to say if anything will change. Back to you. Christine Pitawan, it's there. Thank you. And that rally, meantime, comes on day eight of the Republican walkout. There's still no sign of the GOP senators, or if they'll return. Vice News talked with Senator Tim Knope, who's at a cabin in Idaho. He reiterated what he's told us on the phone, that he believes walking out was the best way to serve his voters, who are against the cap-and-trade bill. The reporter also asked what would happen if Idaho State Police came to get him and bring him back to Oregon. That's a hypothetical. I don't think your hypothetical is going to happen. Okay. Uh, but I do have my passport with me. You have your passport with you? I do. You're going to flee the country uh, over this? Well, you know, one would never know. Democrats have said they don't have enough votes to pass the cap and trade bill, but Republicans don't believe them and they don't trust them. In a statement we got late last night, Republicans said they simply don't believe that bill is really dead. Our Morgan Romero will bring us more coverage of the walkout and the rally from today coming up on KGW News at 4. Meantime, you can always go to KGW.com or the latest KGW News app for the very latest information out of Salem. A convicted murderer who has been in custody for nearly 30 years will walk out of prison tomorrow. A federal judge gave Frank Gable the green light to be released under federal supervision. Gable was convicted of murder for stabbing Oregon's prison chief back in 1989. Last month, the state filed an appeal arguing that Gable remains a danger to the public. That appeal is still pending and Gable is currently in a prison in Kansas. Boy, that was something. A tree in Gresham goes up in a flash fire. That wild and dangerous weather late yesterday made its mark all over the metro area. And today, people are out calling their insurance companies and grabbing the chainsaw to clean up. KGW's Tim Gordon is live in downtown Portland. And Tim, you saw some of this damage firsthand. 
Yeah, Chris, we sure did. And it is out there definitely from Gresham to Oregon City to West Lynn. And some people have a lot of work to do to get things right. On Hidden Springs Court in West Lynn. I don't know how things got over that side. Jeff Lucas is checking around his home, covered in tree debris, big and small. So I come home and this is what I got. Uh, I can't see the roof yet, so I'm, hopefully there's no damage there, but at least not in the house, I don't see anything. One of three tall evergreens in the front yard took a direct hit from lightning. I see this splintered tree. Um, I have to apologize to my neighbors and my neighbor's neighbors from all the splinters that are all over their house. Jeff's teenage daughter was the only one home and his wife made it home before him last night. She said she couldn't get in the front door because of all the branches and everything. So it is kind of like cr crawling through a jungle to get to the front door. My heart raced. I was out, almost out of breath. It took my breath away totally and I was in shock. There was more shock in Gresham. We felt it. It lit the tree up. It was crazy. Becca Shelley was rolling at just the right time as a tree became an instant inferno. She and her mom were watching the lightning storm roll in on the east side. I think it was a flash and the boom at the same time. Strong winds made a huge mess in Oregon City. One guy said the gusts reminded him of the Columbus Day storm of 1962. Back at the Lucas house, Jeff waited for PGE to come to restore his electricity and for a return to normal. So I'm just kind of waiting to clean this stuff up and uh, test the insurance company. Hope all that works out. Now, last night there were more than 20,000 customers without power. Most PGE customers, they've got it down to less than 500 now. That's pretty impressive. The Lucas family is still in the dark, though. Chris? Boy, those crews are going to be busy. All right, Tim, thank you. And we are seeing a lot of photos and videos on social media. The Salem Fire Department shared this photo of a tree that fell onto a house. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. And then Ryan shared this cool time lapse of the clouds moving over a house. Look at that. Deborah shared this video of the rain and the hail coming down in her neighborhood. You can send us your stuff by using the hashtag KGW weather. We were out barbecuing hot dogs and hamburgers, just me and my son. And then all of a sudden, it just started coming down. Rod, you're tracking even more rain and possible hail today? Yeah, it's been a wet day. And real quick mention, you know, yesterday we on this show, we said, hey, we expect this round of thunderstorms to come around dinner time. It's tough to tell just how explosive things were going to be. But yesterday's high was 77. The air mass was only prepared to be at, at about 72. But when the sun kept coming and that temperature shot up an extra five degrees, things just exploded. And it was one of those thunderstorm events we only see every few years, right? Well, here's the rainy day we have had. Today's been anything other than scattered. Here's Powell out in Gresham. I just grabbed this from the camera out there. Look how wet the roadway is. Here's the, uh, the big radar. I do want to show you real quick. There have been storms out east much of the morning. Baker City, look at this line. This is all going to come pretty much right up in through you over the next 60 minutes. So a stormy noon hour for our friends out east. Here in Portland, we're getting on the back side of this steady batch of rain, so that will be moving out. And then I think as we go progressing through the afternoon, many of us will get back into some sun breaks, more of a typical scattered shower pattern. So far, Salem's picked up two tenths of an inch rain. Newport, where it's been raining pretty much all day, has picked up four tenths of an inch of rainfall since midnight. Downtown Portland sitting at 60 degrees, our forecast moving forward. If we get those developing sun breaks, scattered showers will start to pop and become heavy. We'll get some hail. Temperatures stay in the 60s, but the chance of any thunder lightning today is looking pretty remote. So that's the good news. More on your complete seven day shortly. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Rod, thank you. The Supreme Court is tossing out the Trump administration's plan to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. High Court struck it down in a five to four vote just a few hours ago. The citizenship question sparked a lot of controversy, so today's ruling is a win for its opponents. They argued the question would deter immigrants from filling out census forms. We don't know whether the Trump administration will continue to push to add that question. All right, a live look now from the debate hall in Miami. In just a few hours, 10 more Democratic presidential candidates will face off in the second debate. NBC's Tracy Potts with a preview plus reaction from last night's candidates. Topic, but over the course of the next two hours, we candidates will hear confident from after last night's like debate. People saw that uh, that I can handle my own, that I went in there 
uh, with nine other people on the debate stage and that uh, I had a great debate night. Aiming their message at working class voters. You should elect somebody who's been in the foxhole with you the last 20 or 30 years. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio pushing the party to go after voters in Republican states. My message was, hey, we better be willing to take bold stances, mm -hmm. not be looking over our shoulder all the time. The biggest threat to the security of the United States is Donald Trump. And there's no question. <laughs> Washington Gavis. Governor Jay Inslee with wild applause after naming President Trump States as America's America. biggest threat. Ready. Congressman, and we would not they also turned on each other. Julian Castro challenged Beto O'Rourke to support making illegal border crossing a civil penalty, not a crime. Yeah, absolutely we were under attack, but that's okay. Ten more candidates appear tonight, led by frontrunner Joe Biden. His spokeswoman tells me he'll probably be a target, but he's ready. Great prep was fun, but it was also really, really drilled down, and I think we're ready. The stage is set for part two just hours from now. Tracy Potts, NBC News, Miami. And you can watch the second Democratic debate tonight. Starts at 6 o'clock right here on KGW. You don't think it's going to happen to you, but then it does, and it's like it really hits home. This man is worried that he'll lose his business after someone stole a box truck. It happened outside the local grind on Southeast 8th in Powell. It's a food cart and a catering business. Surveillance fo footage there shows the crook roll up in a van early Wednesday. One of them hops out, breaks out of the box truck, and drives away. Here's the hitch. Inside the truck, one of the business's two food carts, basically half of their income source. The fact that, like, yeah, that they can come take the vehicle and the whole operation and just be gone within 10 minutes is, is pretty disheartening. The stolen box truck is a 2006 Chevy Silverado. License plate is 323HD, as in David, A as in Adam. If you have any information on where that truck or the food cart could be, you're encouraged to call the Portland police.